Is this the end of the EV dream? Is Tesla really scrapping a Model 2, the Redwood, before it even launches? Are Q1 sales a total disaster? I'm Dave, welcome to Dave Takes It On. Just sit back and we'll see if we can help you make any sense of this and maybe find a couple of videos that we released almost a year ago that actually predicted all of this. Well, welcome to all new viewers to a channel where you'll find all the news, views, uh, reviews and interviews for everything EV. A big welcome back for our regular viewers. You will find that we do love analogies and try to simplify what at first seems to be a very complicated subject. Here's my latest analogy. Weather forecasting. <laughs> well, a forecast may say something like sunny, warm with some light showers. And for some people, that is exactly what they'll get. But for most of us, we don't. You see, we may be in the bit that gets really heavy showers and very little sunshine. While a few miles away, someone else might get full sunshine with absolutely no rain. A forecast is a general average outlook, not intended to be specific location. Like 27 Arcasia Avenue, Brackley is good for a barbecue this weekend. But the media headlines do love to totally ignore the overall forecast and concentrate on a specific location, or person preferably, where it was completely wrong. A headline, Bill's barbecue was rained off when the forecast said it was sunny, sells far more than Fred had a good barbecue in full sunshine. Well, those headlines then. Well, let's start with Tesla Q1 production. Was it a disaster? Yeah. Uh, the figures show a significant drop. The experts had predicted expected deliveries of around 430,000 and Tesla actually hit 387. So, not a good look. Also, it was behind even Q1 last year, 2023, when they produced 440,000. So yeah, the overall snapshot is a disaster. But look closer and there are four things that the headlines have totally missed or deliberately ignored. First, a drop in production was forecast by Tesla over six months ago. This drop was not a surprise to me at all. Well, second, the Model 3 refresh, the Highland, was announced six months ago. And the Shanghai factory shut down early this year for a few weeks while converting the production lines to the new Highland. Third, most of you remember the Red Sea Suez Canal route was off limits during this quarter due to terrorist activities. And Giga Berlin shut down for two weeks while ships carrying vital components went the long way round. And finally, some idiot domestic terrorists set fire to a power station supplying Giga Berlin. And it also shut down for almost two weeks. But these are not excuses. These are facts. You'll remember them from the news. So what difference could these have made? Well, the peak 440,000 units produced in Q1 2023, divided by 13 weeks and a quarter, means they produced about 33,000 a week. So the five or six weeks loss of production in Q1 this year could have lost 150 to 200,000 units versus the actual loss of 43,000. Well, I do love the media. Never let the facts get in the way of a good story. That good news story would have been Tesla still produced 387,000 despite significant setbacks. That's not just Tesla. Before the Q1 results were announced, the media claims EVs have passed it. The bubbles burst. Sales have crashed. Legacy is abandoning EVs and heading back to ice car production. But at the end of 2023, the Tesla Model Y became the best-selling car in the world. Not, not EV, but best-selling car, beating the Toyota RAV4 and the Corolla, which had held that spot for years. In February, India saw a record 50% growth in new EV sales. UK saw year-on-year -year growth of 28%. And in Europe, EVs dominated, claiming 28% of all new car sales. I think Tech Brew summed it up nicely with their headline, Q1 was a good one for EV sales, unless your name is Tesla. Yeah, some EV companies are struggling, but others are booming. Ford recently found that if your high-priced EVs are stockpiled in deals around the country, around the world, not selling, then a price drop of around $8,000 sees a sudden dramatic surge in sales. What took them so long? Offer them at the right price and they sell really well, as Mercedes also found out when they recently slashed £20,000 off their prices. Other legacy auto are still trying to keep prices high and they wonder why they can't sell any. And this is just like the high street. Some shops booming, some going bust. Is the high street doomed? Probably not. Are EVs doomed? Probably not. 
So at the risk of being called yet again a Tesla fanboy, 2023 was a great year for EVs. Q124 is a good one so far for EVs, allowing for circumstances, and the figures show just how critical Tesla is to the EV world. If their sales drop, the whole industry suffers. But even after a significant drop, Tesla absolutely dominated Europe. In February, for example, Model Y sold nearly 20,000 cars, four times as much as their nearest competitor. And the second place with the old pre-refresh car was the Model 3, itself selling twice as much as Peugeot, Volvo, MG4, Skoda, Audi, BMW, Kia, Dasha Spring. Dasha Spring? Hang on. Does anyone else notice that Dasha Spring is 14,000 euros and the old pre-refresh Tesla is 43,000? They sell three times as many while the $50,000 Model Y sells seven times as many. Well, like it or not, the EV world does revolve around Tesla, hence the majority of headlines are aimed at them. If any of you Tesla haters don't like us covering Tesla, then tell me how we can cover the facts accurately. Do you want me to just pretend they don't exist? We tell it like it is, and apologies for the length of this video as well. Subject is huge, headlines are huge, so the reply is not short. Grab a coffee, it really is worth finding out whether or not Tesla will launch the Redwood, ever. Spoiler alert, they might not. Well, after the success of the Cybertruck launch and the announcement of the Redwood Model 2, the sub-25,000 small car, has Tesla just announced they will not actually be building it at all? Well, once again, I launched a video back in September last year covering this. And for this video I do need to explain what that video and others actually said so just a short recap if you bear with me. Well look out your window and the average house will have two cars parked outside. One of them probably apart from trips to the shops, try trips to pick up kids or visit to Aunt Betty's that's where it will spend the vast majority of the week. For the main car that will probably travel up to half an hour an hour in the morning to work where it remains parked then for the rest of the day then another half hour to hour home to be parked again and maybe it's used uh, an hour in the evening for shopping or a few hours at the weekend so apart from reps on the road the average car spends less than two hours driving each day many cars considerably less your tv gets much more use and we have to pay to keep them on the road with road tax, well, for some of us, insurance, yearly MOT once it gets to four years old, then the servicing and repairs, replacements, plus some of us even pay to park it and not use it. If you commute to work, many users, many, many workers use public car parks for the day, paying for the privilege. It is expensive to buy, expensive to keep, and it is not a good use of a very expensive asset. It just sits there. But there are no alternatives for most of us. Public transport may not exist for our route or timing, and taxis are a ridiculous price. But the early EVs were very expensive, and the majority of new car buyers have been waiting for budget EV models to come out, like the Dasha Spring or the BYD Seagull at 15,000. But budget models are already here. Before the Model Y appeared, the best-selling cars were the likes of Astra, Corsa, VW Polo, uh, Citroen C1, Ford Focus, Toyota Igo. All these are well below £20,000, so that's still nearly £20,000 just sitting there outside doing nothing, costing you money every day. But Elon might have just changed all that. He's announced the launch of the RoboTaxi for the 8th of August this year. But that decision to announce it right now was forced on him by Reuters. See, they ran an article stating he has got hold of some crippling news from anonymous sources that Tesla will not be launching its model Redwood budget model. Now, Reuters is a constant source of rumours and lies, and misleading articles specifically aimed at Tesla, but they are probably right in some of their reporting. Let's see which bits are right and which are but pure clickbait. Is the Redwood cancels? Well, that's not what the information they claim to have actually states, if you take the trouble to read it all. They claim Tesla's afraid of cheap Chinese imports, beating them to it. <laughs> Tesla isn't. Never has been afraid of competition. They also claim Tesla is worried they will not sell any if they do make the Redwood. Oh, absolute utter nonsense. Tesla has a total of less than 14 days inventory, much of that on ships heading towards eager buyers. Legacy auto industry 
inventory is hovering around 100 days and up to over 200 days for some models. They can't sell them. And they're now resorting from manufacturers offering their dealers cash bonuses to sell any of their huge stockpile. They're giving them away. Tesla, on the other hand, sells all it can make, always has done. If Tesla ever sees a slight sales drop, they just drop prices and make less profit. Note that's less profit, unlike Legacy, who make a loss at any price they sell at. Has Tesla decided not to launch Redwood? No, absolutely not a chance. That is purely made up, nor is it worried about cheap Chinese imports. So what is the robo-taxi launch he announced? What is it and why now? Why was he forced into it? And why does Elon think it's such a big deal he has to announce it now anyway? Well, Elon's simply looking ahead. His thinking is many months and years ahead of most people. See, my ideal car is free. I don't want to pay for it. I don't want to buy it. I don't want to have to insure it. I don't want to service it. I don't want to fill it full of fuel. I don't want to have it parked outside, get dirty and wet. No, and nor should I have to pay to park it anywhere. I want it outside whenever I need it. Is this a stupid, impossible dream? Well, Elon Musk does not think so. In fact, he believes it's the future of motoring, just not as we know it. And for the man who has absolutely revolutionized the EV industry and is the clear world market leader in both numbers sold and profit, and done even better in the space industry, well, maybe you should listen before you dismiss him as a lunatic or loudmouth. Elon Musk misses just about every deadline he's ever stated, but he does always, always eventually succeed in each of his ventures. He currently runs, what, Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, uh, The Boring Company, yeah, that's a real one, look it up, uh, Grid Connected, Megapack, Solar PV Factory, a Lithium Mine in Texas, to name just some of them. Each is totally profitable, and he has done this in just 20 years. NASA was formed in 1958, got to the moon in 69. Now he can't even get back to the moon without SpaceX. And Elon is already a decade ahead and he's close to setting off for Mars. Oh, by the way, I do love one of his quotes. He said, I want to get to Mars. I would be happy to die there. Just hopefully not on impact. OK, so will Tesla cancel the launch of the Model Redwood? This is unlikely to be true and not what the data they claim to have actually says. But it's not impossible. He is building new factories in Mexico, India, plus existing gigafactories being extended, Texas, Berlin, Shanghai, specifically to make it. Does anyone believe he suddenly realised, oops, I made a mistake? Well, no, of course not. I certainly don't. What I do know is that the model Redwood is built on a new platform that can take multiple forms. So you take a platform, it's got a chassis, battery pack, motors, suspension, wheels, brakes, computer, everything else all built in already. And you design it so that you can then just bolt on a variety of bodies. It dramatically cuts the cost of production if you make one single platform with all the goodies, expensive bits on it, and it can serve a multiple of vehicles. Maybe bolt on a body, seats, carpets and a decent hi-fi and you've got your Redwood. It's your TV. Or maybe bolt on a driver's seat and a van bodywork and you've got a delivery van the size of, what, Ford Transit? Or maybe bolt in 8 to 14 seats and you've got a little minibus like the Fiat Ducato uh, or the Mercedes Sprint or Toyota Hiace. How about bolting on a motorhome body or an open pickup at the back? You see, you have one part of the factory churning out the platforms, running flat out, efficiently, cheaply, and then each specialist section could just take one of these platforms and do whatever they do to it. And that will be driven by the market. If there's a massive surge in demand for vans and a lull in budget cars, you can adapt and switch really quickly and easily. If you make a single car on a production line and there's a lull, the factory lays off workers, as we've seen with many factories recently. Well, this much, much we already know. The budget price Redwood is produced on this multi-purpose platform. There will be a demand for it, and it is almost certainly going to be built in huge numbers. He's also not scared of competition, as Reuters claimed. His £40,000 Model Y SUV is seriously outselling the really budget Dasher Spring and will easily shrug off any others that arrive on the scene. Now, the reason Reuters has got the wrong end of the stick is why they think that Tesla is developing this platform. Or maybe they really know, but this is a much better clickbait headline. 
The red one is not going to be launched till 2025 at the very earliest. It's probably more like 2026. The emphasis on the moment is purely on the Model 3, which has just had the Highland refresh, and it's seeing a huge surge in demand threatened to overtake the Model Y. And the upcoming Model Y Juniper refresh, that's due soon, and that could go on to do likewise. So Tesla has no shortage of demand till well into 2026, but a lot can happen in two years. With the platform approach, whatever happens, the new platform can quickly and easily adapt. You see, most people look at Tesla as a company that will produce a really good EV, and most people can't afford the Model 3 or Model Y prices, so they desperately want a budget model that they can afford. But just for the moment, forget all that, forget what you, the customer, want, and look at this from a business point of view. If in 2026 Tesla has these new factories up and running and there's an absolutely massive demand for delivery vans and a really quiet depressed market for budget EVs, what would you do? Well, Elon's just confirmed that whatever the market demand is into the future, when the factories are finished he can just adopt and deliver really quickly. But he also knows an awful lot that we don't. See, as a CEO, he's legally banned from giving away certain information or even deny denying true or false stories like Reuters. No CEO can do it. There are laws against it. He could be charged with influencing the markets and the share prices if he gives too much away again. So he knows stuff we have no idea about and the two he seems to be pushing to the front are full self-driving and robo-taxis. Hence the report that he'll be launching robo-taxis later this year because if he's launching them he has to have full self-drive working. Yeah, I know you have your opinion as to when, if ever, either of these can work, but have you actually asked Elon or even talked to him? He's the only one who really knows how close or how far away they are. But one of the uses for the new platform is a robo-taxi. OK, back to my ideal car, probably yours as well. That's simply a robo-taxi. Yet many people have no idea what one is, nor how transformative they will be if they ever work. The problem with taxis is the cost. Been online and Manchester Airport's report that it costs between three and five pound a mile for trips over 10 miles, but less than 10 miles is a flat 30 quid. Heathrow Airport to central London is priced between 60 and 200, depending on the number of passengers and the time of day. So it got me thinking, how much does it actually cost to run a taxi and drive that distance? Well, According to the RAC and other sources, the cost of running an average car for you and me, including buying it, interest, leasing it, insurance, servicing, repairs, new tyres, depreciation, it's around a pound a mile, of which only about 20 or 30 pence is fuel. The journey is 16 miles, so where does that £60 pound price come from? And the answer, of course, is the driver. He wants to pay, she, and needs to make a living. He or she also does not spend every hour while working actually driving someone around and getting paid. So he or she needs to make a good wage off each trip. Plus, he or she can all only drive about eight hours a day. That's the law. The vast majority of the fare that you pay is for the wages of the driver. Robotaxis take that element, throw it away. Robotaxi is a full self-driving vehicle, no steering wheel, no pedals, thus has no need for a driver. It's like the Docklands Light Railway. No driver, fully automated. It will be electric, and that makes two huge differences. First, it's cheaper to fill up if you have access to a superb, cheap supercharging network. Second, while it is plugged in charging, or just waiting around for a passenger, if it has V to G, vehicle to grid, it could be making a fortune buying and selling electricity. Octopus already uh, uh, have launched this for the homes. Imagine a fleet of a million robo-taxis all plugged in for a good part of each day, each with a 75 kilowatt hour battery, buying cheap electricity and then selling it back to the grid when demand and prices are high. That's multiple mega packs. And when it has a passenger and has to disconnect, still gets paid. Its running costs will be covered, more than covered, by electricity trading, and of course there's no driver to pay. These could and should be ridiculously cheap to operate. That's the principle of them. Your car will currently will be costing you about at least a pound a mile to run. Plus you might need to pay for parking. What will you do if a robo-taxi charges 25 pence a mile to drive you around? That journey from Heathrow to central London in a robo-taxi might cost you four quid. Which one will you choose? 60 pound, four pound? Well, 
any time, day or night. What about going on holiday? You see, you could choose an airport taxi service for about a £100 return. That's a figure I was recently quoted when we went off to Menorca. Or about £100 for parking at the airport, which I eventually chose and paid for. Now, if I'd been offered a robot taxi for less than £10 return, I know which I would choose. And Uber has now led the way in ride calling and opened up this exact market for the arrival of robo taxis. An app on your smartphone at the moment allows you to order an Uber, Lyft, or whatever on the spot when you need it, or it allows you to pre book. Uh, if you want it here at five o'clock, take me to the airport, that's fine, you can book it. On demand taxis have really taken off. You order, you order in the app, and the car arrives. That's what a robo taxi is. Order one on, on your Tesla app. It arrives minutes later or on schedule. It drives you where you need to go and it drops you off. It's a taxi. And industry experts predict it could be half or a quarter of the cost of driving yourself and a tenth of the cost of a taxi with a driver. Down the pub, add a few drinks too many, just leave your car, get a robot taxi, it'll be a quid. These could be huge. When a few mile taxi ride costs a quid, who on earth would choose to pay 30 quid for one with a driver? Now, the speed of adoption, totally unknown, but likely to be quick. And these are to be built on that same new platform. So, is he abandoning the Redwood? Is FFD, FSD likely to be here working by 2026? Probably not, but he's actually building up the infrastructure for either eventuality. He is future-proofing Tesla. Once again, purely from a business point of view, a robot taxi is a much better product. Yeah, you have to the cost of building it and you will not be able to sell it and get your money back and make a profit. But once on the road, it will immediately begin earning your money. Estimates in the industry suggest a robo taxi charging 25 or even 50p a mile could earn around £20,000 a year. Robo taxi plugged in and trade electricity could earn many times this. And a robo taxi is an exceedingly profitable product if it can work and be licensed. And you won't know how long that will take until first, full self-driving is actually working at the required level, and second, he actually applies for a license or approval to operate. But the attraction of building a car then letting it run itself, charge itself, hire itself out, trade electricity itself for the next 10, 20, 30 years with almost zero involvement is absolutely massive. So Elon has just announced to the world that no matter what happens in the future of transport, he is already ready at a time when his competitors can't even make a profit from a simple EV. Out of choice, I believe that Tesla will choose to make and operate robo-taxis. And I reported this in the video in August last year. No doubt at all. It will mean that FSD for self-driving would have to be working and, he'll be, and he will then be selling or licensing that at a very health, healthy profit to all the other EV manufacturers. The car production side of the business for selling to the public would then be it would take a back seat. But if full self-driving is not working or he can't get a license by 2026, you can guarantee he'll be making and selling Redwoods on a scale that will make the Model Y look absolutely sick. Well, sorry, shareholders, I am one. In the short term, the media and the markets will see the possibility of not making the Redwood as a serious, possibly terminal setback to Tesla as a company. Share price will crash yet again. But if I know anything about Elon, then if the Redwood does not ever launch, it will only be because what he has launched in its place is a million times better. Eventually, the stock markets and financial advisors and pundits will catch up. They just always take their time doing so. I'm going to finish on a final question because I know I'm going to receive a massive amount of comments about being a Tesla fanboy. But answer me this one question honestly. Would you rather be one of the most hated people in the world? Loud, outspoken, opinionated, but a multi-billionaire with more free cash in his personal bank account than many countries have? drives around in expensive exotic cars, travels most places on his own personal jet and meets heads of state and royalty almost daily, gets invited to events and gets to play with fast cars and spaceships. Or would you rather be someone on minimum wage, struggling to pay all the bills at the end of the month and explaining to a partner, yet again, why they're living in such a small, damp house, not being able to afford a decent holiday and always having to explain how things are going to get better? Go on, we all know your real answer. Answer that. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, 
please click the like button. It does actually make a difference to us as a small new channel with YouTube. If you'd like to see more videos on this lines, then click the subscribe button. It's totally free. Just click the button. And if you want to be notified every time we launch a video, then please click the notification bell and you'll be notified. For those of you who want to go a little bit further and support the channel financially, uh, we have a Patreon membership. Uh, the details for that are down below. So thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.